In my last video, we took a look at kind of the bird's eye view of the new MetaSound output watching feature that's coming in Unreal Engine version 5.3. Now, in that video, we were using the development build, and I said that I wasn't going to put out any sort of tutorial until we got a public release. And as of a couple days ago, uh, we now have 5.3 Preview 1 inside our Epic Games launcher. Uh, so if you haven't done so already, you can definitely go download that and start to check this out. Now, since we do have a public release, we are going to start getting into the tutorial phase of this feature. And I use the term tutorial loosely because in this video, I am going to show you how to set it up and get it working. Um, I also have a couple examples of what I use this to do. But in the grand scheme of things, there are so many possibilities with this that really the limitation is you and your creativity. So let's go ahead and we're going to jump over into the engine. And this is 5.3 Preview 1. And I've got a couple things set up here. Uh, I've got some audio meters. I've got this platform over here. I've got this room with some lights and a door and uh, I kept the first person weapon pickup in here because uh, we're also going to have a little bit of fun with that as well and so like I said I will show you kind of how I set these examples up but what you're going to be able to do with this beyond these examples is just amazing so I'm going to go ahead and push play on this and first thing we have is our meters and these are reacting dynamically to different frequency output of our music meta sound. And over here we've got this platform that goes up and down and we can ride it. Over here uh, we've got a little disco room with some lights that are changing color to the BPM. And we've got a door over here that we can open and close. And I said we were going to have a little bit of fun with our first person weapon. So why not add some explosions? And all of these different elements are 100% driven by a meta sound output. Now, with that being said, is this the most efficient way to perform these kinds of tasks? That remains to be seen. Um, to be completely honest, I really just started playing around with it to see what was possible and what you could possibly do with it. And in my opinion, that's really the best way to learn is just dive in, see what you can do and learn as you go. So let's jump in and start looking at how to actually create this system. So I've opened up a new level here, uh, just a regular first person template. Uh, you can do this in any template, it doesn't matter. And in order to get MetaSound output watching working, the first thing that we need is obviously a MetaSound. I'm going to go ahead and just real quickly create a MetaSound source, and I'm just going to call this MetaSound out. You can name it whatever you want, um, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to call it MetaSound out. And I'm going to switch this over to stereo and add a wave player. Uh, this works in stereo, mono, um, any of your surround sound settings, doesn't matter. And we do want to collect, connect the left and right just so we can hear it. Um, but we are going to get into some examples in a little bit where this isn't necessary because we'll actually be creating meta sounds specifically designed just to utilize the output. And so I'm going to, just for the sake of the tutorial again, grab our starter music. If you've been in Unreal Engine for a while, this song is probably just burnt into your memory. Um, but if we hit play, you know, it works like a normal meta sound it plays music but in order to get the meta sound outputs 
to function within your level blueprint, then we kind of have to have an idea of what we want to do with it. So I'm going to create just an arbitrary output here. And uh, I'm going to use the float. And I'm just going to call this metasound underscore float out. And float is just one of the several output types that you can have. And what I want to do with this float is let's say back in our level, we put in a cube, just a basic old cube. And maybe I want to use the music to change the position of this cube, say, let's say on the Z axis. So we've got our cube. The next thing we need to do in order to get this working is we're going to jump in our level blueprint. And it doesn't have to be the level blueprint. I'll show you in a little bit that you can actually create your own blueprints to make things modular. Uh, but we're going to call an event begin play. And again, this, this whole tutorial is completely modular. Um, you can use anything you want to, to trigger, but I'm just going to do it on begin play and we're going to add an audio component. And I want this component to be that meta sound that we just created. Go ahead and save everything. So now, uh, if we hit play in our level, you can hear that now the music starts automatically, which is exactly what we want. The next thing we need is our meta sound all the way down at the bottom here. Yeah, get meta sound output subsystem. And with our meta sound output subsystem, we want to drag off of this and we want to search for watch output. And I'm going to drag this over so that it starts watching the output right from the beginning. Uh, you don't have to. You can trigger this some other way. Um, but basically, we need the target to be going to our MetaSound output system. And then we need to know which MetaSound we're watching. And so since I have this audio component already set up with that MetaSound, we're just going to take this return value and plug it right into that audio component. And since we have this float output that we created, we do need to make note of the name. So I called it ms underscore float underscore out. I'm just going to copy this and come back into our level blueprint here. And I'm just going to paste it right here. Now we got this error. Uh, because we don't currently have any events that are coming off of this on output value change. So we're going to go ahead and create a custom event. And I'm just going to call this float out. This particular item doesn't matter what you name it. And if I recompile that, you'll see that the error goes away. So now, since we have our meta sound output system as our target, our audio component with our defined meta sound in it going to this. We've defined which output we're watching. Um, now, anytime a value changes on this output, we can call an event. And so back inside our wave player here, uh, I'm actually just going to go ahead and add these two. To now you can do this, like I said, with a mono source, a surround sound source, doesn't matter. And we're going to go ahead and get an envelope follower. And so now what this is doing is it's taking our audio in and with the envelope, it's going to allow us to spit out a float value conversion of that audio signal. Now, because we do still have it connected to our outputs, we still hear it. But now, in addition to sending this to our speakers, we're sending this 
to our level blueprint. So inside our level blueprint, uh, we want to get a reference to this cube. And let's go ahead and get the actor's current location. We are gonna break this apart. Cause like I said, we, we only wanna move that cube on the Z axis, so up and down. And we're gonna drag off of here again and do a set actor location. Break this as well, but on the input side, it's actually called make. And we want our X and Y to stay constant, but we want to move our Z. So off of our custom event, we're gonna take this output, we're gonna say get float. And all of these are different types of outputs that you can watch. So you can have a Boolean, a float, an integer, a string, or a time in seconds. So things like your wave duration, um, your Boolean on whether a specific stem is active or not, uh, strings, you can spit out text, integers if you're using whole numbers, you get the idea. Uh, you could have a bunch of different things that you can watch from these outputs. But since we're using the envelope, we're gonna go ahead and grab our float and drag this over to our set actor location and i'm just going to slide this right into the make vector and if we compile this and save it and i hit play we've got our cube uh, but it doesn't look like it's moving and that is because uh, if you'll read this here uh, what we need to do, if we're going to make an object move with it selected, we need to come in here to our details panel and we need to switch this from static to movable. And so we've changed that. Hit play again. And you notice that our cube is now stuck in the ground. And if we look ever so slightly, it's vibrating a little. And that's because this float isn't actually moving a whole lot. What we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply it. And let's say we're gonna multiply it by 50. So we're taking this tiny little between zero and one float value and we're, we're basically exciting it. So we compile this and move it back out of the way and hit play again. And so now you can see that it is actually moving um, just because we've kind of expanded our float range that we're moving this object. On. And uh, just to show you that this works regardless of what's in the meta sound, switch back over and uh, let's get our Get our first person weapon sound in here. I do have that set to loop, so it's gonna continuously loop, spit out the envelope float. We'll hit play again. And so now you can see that it is actually moving on, based on what is coming out of our meta sound, regardless of what audio file we're putting in there. And so if we jump back over to our meta sound, this is where you can really start to get experimental with what you're doing. So if I break this out, go ahead and move these off to the side. I can actually run this into a band splitter. And now, if I wanted to, say our band zero, which is anything under 500 hertz, 
Now just anything under 500 hertz is controlling this and the rest of the audio isn't doing anything or we can send it to do other things. So like I said in the beginning of this video, this really boils down to you getting creative with how you want to utilize this. And so if we jump back over to this kind of sample project that I made, that's exactly what I'm doing with these audio meters. And on top of having these audio meters work, like I said, you can actually set this up in its own blueprint. So I've got this blueprint here that has an audio component already in it. And I've got these five different needles. And basically what we're doing is we're expanding on what I had just shown you with the cube. So I've got a piece of music inside a wave player. It's going out to our left and right speakers so that we can hear it. Um, Whereas in the, the, the example with the cube, I just added them together. Uh, you can also run them to a mono mixer. That's gonna mix them together, but then gives you the ability to adjust gain per channel. Regardless, we're getting into our band splitter. And so then from there, uh, I did change the crossover points just to kind of get it to function how I want. But just like we did with a cube, I'm using envelope followers and I have five custom outputs. Our low frequency, low mids, mids, high mids, and then our highs. And so when I hit play on this, so now we're using the float value from each of those uh, different frequency bands and we're just rotating. We're taking that little needle that I made and we're just changing the rotation. That is literally all we're doing. So whether it's, you know, rotation or actor location, playing around with all the different values to make it act the way you want. So far we've covered two different things that you can do with this. And like I said, the possibilities are really endless. So let's jump back over and now let's take a look at this platform. Now with this platform, it's very similar to what we did with the cube. Um, but this is gonna be an example of how I said that we can set up a meta sound with no audio outputs because we're creating it just specifically for uh, doing what we needed to do with the output. We don't necessarily need to hear it. So I have an LFO set up, a frequency, so it's happening 0.1 times per second. And our minimum and maximum value is negative one to one. Have that going to an output, just like we did with all the others. Now this one I did do in the level blueprint. So we've got our Metasound subsystem. Uh, we're watching the output. The output name is the LFO sign out because I'm using a sine wave on this LFO to give us a nice curve. And we're just using this to then slowly, because like I said, we're only doing 0.1 cycles per second. And we're basically using that to get the relative location. So again, when I hit play, our sine wave is what's actually moving that platform. Now you can do this with, uh, if you wanna come in and make a level sequence and you wanna animate it that way, you certainly can. This will be yet another time where I say that I'm not sure of the performance differences, but if you do figure that out, please let me know because I'd be interested. Now let's take a look at our lights. So our lights are a slightly different uh, kind of setup. Basically, I'm using the BPM, which the piece of music that I'm working with, uh, I know that it's 190 BPM. And so we're gonna run this into a trigger repeat. 
And so I had to play with the beat multiplier and division to get it triggering on the frequency that I want. But basically, every time this triggers, we're running it into a value chain. So it's going to start at zero. As soon as this trigger fires the first time, it's going to set it to one. And then when it fires the second time, it's going to set it back to zero. And so we can use this value change between one and zero because technically, if we come over here to our lights, that constitutes a value change. So now we're triggering an event based on the BPM. And so I've got four lights. And every time that triggers, it's randomly getting a float value to feed into making that lint color. So if we go ahead and play from here. Now you can see every time we get that random value change, it's going to grab another random value for our RGB colors. And so now we essentially get uh, meta sound driven light shows. And so by this point, I think you can really kind of see that there, there is an overall general concept here. It's just up to you on how you want to use it. So now let's take a look at our door. And with everything that we've covered before, uh, you can probably guess that I am adjusting this door's rotation using a float. And that is exactly what I have done here. So I have a custom trigger to trigger a value change. And so right now I do have that bound to, where did I put it? Yeah, right here. So I've got this set up so that when I press the zero key, it's going to execute a, per a trigger parameter, which we've discussed that time and time again with controlling meta sounds via blueprints. And so now we're kind of coming full circle. We're controlling this meta sound blueprint. We're controlling the meta sound with blueprints and then using the data derived from that meta sound to come back into the blueprint. So custom input a trigger sequence. And so each time we press it, it's basically going to toggle between zero and one. And we're going to interp two over two seconds. And that's going to give us a two second long door opening and door closing uh, kind of animation. And so just like with all the others, meta sound output coming into our watch. We are looking at the name of the output we're watching. It's all coming off of this audio component. And so now we're taking that zero to one and we're mapping it into a rotation on our Z axis. And so if the uh, float value coming from our meta sound is zero, then it's going to output a number of 90 degrees and when we switch it to one, it's going to, over the course of two seconds, that's what our interp2 time is, it's going to basically glide this 90 degrees back to zero degrees. And it doesn't have anything to do with the music, but I'm not going to disable the music. I'll show you. So, we have our door. And like I said, when I have the numpad zero key pressed, over the course of two seconds. And if we press it again, get that door closed. So, I mean, if you wanted to create an audio driven game, uh, instead of using like level sequences or things like that, you can certainly do so. Now for the last example, uh, which is the gunfire. That I've got over here. And for that, we're actually using another new feature for 
So this audio component isn't actually the gunfire sound. Instead, we're using our audio bus readers here. And let's go ahead and grab. And so inside my content browser, uh, we do have our first person template firing sound. And I created a separate meta sound specifically for it. So it's still our first person template sound. And this time we're going into an audio bus writer. And basically I'm using this kind of as a blueprint interface so that we can send audio from our weapon fire um, blueprint into our level blueprint. So that's all this is doing. These audio outputs, even if we hit play right now, you don't hear anything. Uh, you can see the cables light up because we are sending audio signal, but we're sending it to this MS underscore bus that I created. And that is coming over to our MS receive. So it's coming out of here, or it's going into here and coming out here. Uh, where I do have the left and right so that we can hear it. And just like I did uh, with the lights and things, we're just doing an on trigger or trigger on threshold. And so anytime the amplitude of this gunfire sound happens, we're going to toggle between setting our values, zero and one. And we can set this to 0.1, we can set it to 500, it doesn't matter as long as these two numbers are different. As soon as this value changes, we're going to be triggering something. So we've got our meta sound receive, we're watching the output, we're watching that fire out output that I created here. And so anytime that gets triggered, we're then triggering this uh, particle system, which has an explosion. Uh, this down here, just for visibility, I uh, did have an issue where without it, as soon as I hit play, for some reason, the, uh, the particles would trigger, which I'm assuming is probably just because they're auto activated or activated on spawn. Um, so this really isn't part of the meta sound output watching. It's more of just a, to get it to work, something that I had to do. And so now each time our fire sound again comes from our wave player, it's going to go into this bus, gonna come out of the bus, trigger this sequence, which we have our fire out, and which constitutes as a value change. Every time we fire that weapon, we're activating the explosions. So I know that that was kind of a long, convoluted, and probably confusing um, tidbit. But like I said, these are just examples that I want to show off uh, of just possibilities. Um, there's no dead set right or wrong way to do that. Um, you can probably set it up uh, several different ways. You know, if you've been in game development for a while, you know that there's not usually one end-all be-all solution, that everything is particular to your project. And so again, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a jumping off point. You know, we talked about how to set it up and how to get it working, and that's really where the tutorial stops. Everything from this point forward is up to you and your creativity. So hopefully this was something that you found enjoyable. Um, and I really love to see what you guys create with this. So if you make anything cool with it, uh, feel free to join the sound effects guy discord server. There will be a link in the description below. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell. So you don't miss out on any future content until next time.